Hello everyone. Let's take a brief review about what we have learned in the last lecture. We define an information system as a system that adopts the computer hardware and software component to analyze data in order to support people's decision making. We want to use the computer hardware and software component to create an IT infrastructure as the foundation of an information system. After we set up the information system, we want to analyze data by following certain policies in order to find useful knowledge to support managers' decision making. We also discussed the step of creating a successful information system. We want to identify our strategy first. We want to know who we want to be. You can choose to be a cost leader in the market or a differentiation leader in the market. Your company can also provide products or service to all customers in the market or only focus on a group of customers in the market. Remember, we use uh, strategic metrics to identify our strategy. After we figure out who we want to be, the next step is to look at the market. We want to answer a question if the environment allows us to be who we want to be. We use Potter's Five Force framework to look at five factors, including the customers, the suppliers, the new entrant to the market, the substitute products, and the existing competitors in the market to answer the question. The next step is to design the supply chain of our company. We want to identify which customers, suppliers, and departments in our company will get involved in a business process. We also want to answer a question, what factors make those customers, suppliers, and departments connected in a business process? Therefore, the business process design and management is the core of a supply chain system management. The business process management is a topic we will discuss in this lecture. You must be curious about this picture on this slide. If we give the same broccoli and shrimps to one Chinese chef and to an American chef, why the final dishes are different, even though the raw materials are the same? I think two reasons. First of all, the menus in different chefs' minds are different. When the Chinese chef gets the raw material, he will think to cook a hot Chinese broccoli shrimp stern. The American chef will use the same raw materials to cook an Italian-style broccoli shrimp salad. It's just like in business world. When different leaders face the same market, they will choose different strategies. One could be the cost leader, another one could be the differentiation leader even they are in the same industry or facing the same market conditions. The second reason is different processes of cooking food will make the final dishes taste different. For instance, the Chinese chef maybe prefer to add in spices in the beginning of his cooking, but the American chef maybe like adding spices when the food is fully cooked. The same thing happened in business world as well. The different ways of combining the customers, suppliers, and our company in a business process will lead to different performance of companies in the market. Today we will first talk about the definition of a business process management. In the future, when we talk about business process management, we will use a short term, BPM. And then I will talk about the major components of a BPM. Also, we will learn how to use business process management notation, or BPMN, to design a model of business process. 
Since we have talked about data and information for many times, I will use some example to further discuss the difference between the two concepts today. Lastly, I will introduce a case study to you. We will talk about how their computer become a major competitor in the market by redesigning the traditional business process. A business process is a sequence of activities, starting from manufacturing to the day when you deliver the final products to the customers. A business process usually consists of five major components, including inbound logistics, manufacturing, outbound logistics, sales and marketing, and customer service. Let me use an example to explain each component. Suppose now we plan to sell a smartphone in the market. You need to get the display, the screen, uh, the keyboard, the chips, the processors from different suppliers, right? The process that you get all of these components is an inbound logistic process. And then you combine all these individual components together to produce a smartphone and then label it with your brand. This is a manufacturing process. And then you need to design your distribution channels. Uh, you have to make a decision. Do you want to sell it online or you want to sell it through retail stores? The process is an outbound logistic process. And then you have to launch some advertisement campaign to let the customer know your brand and your product. And this is the sales and marketing process. After you sold the smartphone to the customer, you need to provide some customer care service to finish the whole business process. You also noted that there are four arrows in this supply chain system. What are they? They represent three flows, information flow, financial assets flow, and raw material flow. These three factors make each component interrelated with others in a supply chain system. When we design a supply chain system, we need to consider several factors. A supply chain system design could be very complicated for everyone to understand. So why don't we use a standardized notation to design a supply chain system in the model? We use Business Process Management Notation, or BPMN, to design the supply chain system model. We always use a dot to show the starting point of a business process in a supply chain. We use a dot with a black circle on the edge to show the ending point of the business process. During the business process, if you want to make some decision, for instance, in a quality control process, if you want to check if a product is qualified for the quality criteria, we use a diamond to show the decision point. When you want to make decision, you put the decision question inside of the diamond. For instance, if this product is a qualified product. And then you can see two lines going out of the diamond. This represent the yes or no answers to the decision questions. If you want to show what should be done, what are the activities after the decision, you use a rectangle. And then write down the activity name inside of the rectangle to show what should be done after you make the decision. How can we make the units in a BPMN connected? We use the solid arrows. These arrows represent process flows. For instance, the raw material flow and the financial access flow from one department to another department in a company. In order to differentiate the information flow from the raw material flow and the financial assets flow, we use the dotted arrows. On top of these arrows, you write the methods you want to show to the next department. For instance, if you want to indicate 
why you believe the product is not qualified to the manufacturing department when you return the unqualified product, you can write the reason on top of data flow error. You write the reason on top of the error. But if you only want to show the process of returning unqualified product, you can use the solid arrows. Now let's see some example. Let me give you about one minute to work on this question by yourself, and then I will share my answers with you. This is how you use the BPMN to design the quality control process. We have a decision-making point. We want to check if the bag of candies is overweight. If it is, then we need to return the bag of candies to the manufacturing department. Otherwise, we send the bag of candies to our warehouse. Remember, you want to show the a dot and the dot with a black circle to indicate the starting point and the ending point. Now let's see another example. Let me give you another minute to work on your answers and then I will share mine with you. This is the model design for this logistics process. We have a decision-making point. We want to check if a product is labeled as RWALL. -L. If it is, then we send it to the distribution center in Rockwell, Texas. Otherwise, we send the product to the distribution center in Oklahoma City. From these two examples, can you see the benefits of using BPMN? A business process could be highly complicated. By using BPMN, we can simplify the supply chain model design. Instead of using thousand words, we only need a few BPM notation, like we did in these two examples, to show how a business process works. Another benefit is to show a complicated business process in a very straightforward picture. So everybody in a company can visualize the business process or procedure in their mind. Before we move on to the case study of Dell computers, let's talk about the difference between data and information. What are data? Data are numbers. They are used to record a transaction or describe a transaction. What is information? Information is the knowledge that we investigated from the data set. Information is used to support the decisions about what should be done next. Suppose now you are the IT Music Store Manager. This data set in this slide describes what your customer Tina Lin has bought in your store, how much money you have got from this customer. But there are so much more about this customer we can learn from this data. For instance, we find out Tina Lin likes a particular singer. Therefore, as long as there is a new song performed by this singer, you should recommend this song in higher priority under Tina Lin's iTunes Music Store account. You can find a big gap between Tina Lin's order. As a manager, you should figure out the reason for this gap. Why did this customer stop buying songs from our store? Is that because the website didn't work well, or there was no new song from a particular singer? This is the difference between data and information and more important, how you use information in a business application.
Now let's talk about the case study of Dell Computer. Let's take a look at how this company changed from a new business in 1980s to the number one PC manufacturer nowadays in the world by redesigning the traditional business process. Dell Computer has got several notable achievements in recent years. In 2013, the sales revenue of this company was about 57 billion US dollars. It is currently the number one PC manufacturer according to the market share. In the US, the market share for Dell Computer is about 20% in 2013. The question is, how could this company become so successful? To answer this question, let's take a brief review about this company's history. Dell Computer was founded by Michael Dell in 1984. When Dell started his business, he had a very clear strategy about what his company should be. He wanted his company to be the cost leader in the market. He wanted to provide the cheapest computers to the customers. However, Dell faced several issues. First of all, when he started his business, the PC market had been highly occupied by major PC manufacturers such as IBM and HP. These big companies had a large number of financial resources that Dell cannot compete with. Secondly, these major PC manufacturers had collaborated with the retail stores such as Walmart and Best Buy. It's very difficult for Dell to get in these retail stores because no one would like to give up the spaces for big names such as IBM or HP to a brand nobody have heard of. So what should Dell Computer do as a new entrant to compete with those major competitors in the PC market? Dell shifted his focus to the business process management design. He found out IBM and HP was using the traditional business process. It started from the inbound logistics and ended with the customer service. They all believe that this traditional business process could bring two problems to IBM and HP. What are the two problems? Let me give you about one minute to think about your answers and then I will share the answers with you. The first problem is, the traditional business process will bring a large number of overhead costs to IBM and HP. Because the traditional business process started with inbound logistics, before IBM and HP get any sales revenue, they have to invest a large number of costs in buying raw materials and building warehouses. The second problem is, the traditional business process didn't consider what the customer really want in the early manufacturing process. IBM and HP assumed that what they produced would be what the customer really wanted. But there is also a very high chance that the customers didn't want what they manufactured at all. To address these two problems, Dale redesigned the business process in his new company. He started his business process with the customer first. He opened the telephone lines so the customers could call in and tell the company what they wanted to buy. And then Dale Computer will purchase the raw materials such as the displays, the keyboards, the CPUs according to what the customer ordered. With this new business process, Dell Computer was able to get the sales revenues even before the company invested any cost. More important, the customers could purchase what they really wanted to buy. And this new business process is called Build to Order. 
Could IBM and HP compete with their computers built to order business process? In other words, could IBM and HP change their traditional business process to build to order? They couldn't. Why? Because the switching cost for IBM and HP was too high to do that. They have already built the warehouses. They have already collaborated with the retail stores. It's impossible for IBM and HP to give up everything they had built up and use the build to order business process as their computer did. Therefore, the build to order business process gave their computer a very strong advantage in the market. Even though this company didn't have a large number of financial support or a big distribution channel in the beginning. I hope you can find the importance of business process from this case study. Also, the traditional business process doesn't always fit every company. When you design a business process for your company, you have to consider several factors, such as your strategy, your competitors, your customers, and so on. This concludes this lecture. I will see you soon in the next one.